Hello guys and welcome back. So let's keep perfecting our AI and let's go ahead and play and see what we're having now. You can see we're having, having the AI patrolling and when the AI sees us, the AI hears us over there. I was just gonna try to go away. Uh, the AI will wait there. And uh, if it doesn't see us again, he will go back to patrolling. If it, the AI hears us again, they will go there and let's go down. They will go actually to you know the the other side and let's just go back here, right? Okay, so they will wait there for three seconds and then go back to patrolling. So that's what the AI is having. Let's actually implement something more interesting. So what 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 I want the AI to do is uh, I want the AI to be able to actually wait not just wait but look around right look around the different areas and particularly those areas that are, that is closed but we cannot really see right so to those corners see like or those blockers at the, the back of the walls and see if there's something up there right that would be cool so instead of doing wait i want something else okay because your graph is getting a little bit more crowded every time we do stuff so it's also a good time i show you to create different blackboard uh behavior behavior trees and just uh you know use those as different modules so i'm gonna close this guy and i'm going to create a new behavior tray i can call this guy bt uh let's call it a uh, look around okay so this BT look around will just do the looking around part, checking around. Let's let's check call that checking around. Because it's not looking but checking, so it's moving there, right? Checking around, naming is important. And then go to the checking around. Now you have, we have a new route. I'm gonna make the, the guy using the same blackboard. If you can do that. Sometimes you have to reopen this guy. Okay go to the blackboard now you can see we have the same blackboard okay so here I want to create a sequence of tasks okay first of all I need to find a location to check right and then I need to go there okay when I reach it there I kind of wanted to look around by looking left looking right looking up looking down whatever right and then it's just you know when I'm not seeing anything then go back right cool so to get a location here though um, you do need to use a uh, environment querying system. Okay, so uh, what we do here is go to edit and then editor preferences. Just go to all settings and search for EQS and just check that out. Okay, and then you go here to the behavior uh, tray folder. I'm gonna create a new folder called this EQS, and inside of it, I'm gonna create a new artificial intelligence environment. Query and EQ, call this guy EQ as find place to check. Okay. Alright. So EQS is basically a way of checking sample in different areas around you and uh, it's going to give you, uh, it's going to score every sample and see which one has the highest score based on the criteria you give it and then give you like the f the winner and uh, it's going to yield a possession uh, a position right so what we do here is um, just to be able to visualize it I'm going to create yet a another new blueprint and that's going to be actually of the type EQS testing pound select that and I'll call this guy EQS testing pound and I'm just gonna oops drag this testing pound somewhere here. Drag it up and hit end button to make it sit there. Okay. And then I'm gonna drag that my EQS to the EQS query template. Okay. So what this does is basically using this pound as if it's the AI character. So based on that, uh, to do the EQS to test what the EQS behaves, you can move this guy around and see how EQS changes, right? All right, cool. Now when I've done that, I can double click to open EQS. Right now we have nothing. It looks like a behavior tree, but we can drag out and first of all, creating a bunch of sample points that can be like 
uh, is a, a circle of points, a cone of points, or a grade. I'm gonna do actually a I'm gonna try a donut here. Okay. You can see what it does is basically creating all those uh, blue spheres. Those are the sample points. Okay. All right. Now after that, I'm gonna give it the first criteria here. I'm gonna add a test. I'm gonna say I'm gonna look for some somewhere close. I'm not gonna go too far away. So distance will be the first criteria. I'm gonna drag in a distance. Okay, you can see now I'm not really getting anything, right? Uh, that's because it's using the the distance. The far away, the better. I'm gonna change that to actually negative one as the score factor. So anything closer, I will actually get higher grade. Right? And I'll actually, I have to save this and then drag this around. No, it's not really updating actually. So let's see, between zero and zero, that's why. And uh, the min and max value, of course, I have to change that too. So the max value will be, I don't know, somewhere like a thousand or so, right? And minimum value will be zero, right? So I'm checking this range. Though any one that is close, closer, will have a higher score. And you can see those score here, right? 0 0.7, 0 0.35, zero, right? Those are the scores. Uh, the higher the score is, uh, the better that one will be used to be the final query result, the final location this query will give me. So here I'm going to grab this guy and say, let's change a few things for this uh, this shape we're getting, uh, those sample points. I'm going to say I want to have a have more rings. can crack that up, can change the re inner radius to something even smaller, right? outer radius to be something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna look for some somewhere close, basically not too far away. Okay, I can also make it actually spiral a little bit so that it's more random. All right, maybe a little bit longer. <coughs> okay, have one more line and just a little bit more longer. Yeah, I'm, I'm not also just go really close though. Just maybe a bigger. A bigger uh, radius. Okay, so I'm checking those points and see which one is close. And also, I want to also check. If, if I want to check somewhere I cannot see yet. So I'm gonna say, okay, that's another criteria, right? Another test. I'm gonna say that's gonna be the trace, right? Trace to query visibility. Okay, and I'm tracing the uh, score as. Uh, uh, the context will be the query, which is this guy, the care query here. So based on the query, right, is it visible to the query or not? Okay. If it's visible to the query, you can see it's not really giving us any score. That means those are filtering out. Now, I don't really want to filter those out, right? I want to rather say I wanted to filter it. Uh, I want to score it only. So I'm going to check score only. You can see now only those part that are. Uh, not seen by us, and not only, but those those parts that are not seen by us will have higher score. I can see the highest score here is actually this one, the point nine, right? Because this is this is also the closest on those where area that that are we're not be able uh, able to see, right? So that's actually a pretty good place to go take a look and right? see if there's something behind the wall, right? That's what I'm trying to get to to go to, okay. Now, but there's one more issue there though. If you drag it here, you can see it's, it's also scoring those guys to be a pretty high grade, but that's somewhere we cannot really reach, right? So we need to have another criteria, which is the pass finding. And we're gonna say, okay, anything the pass finding cannot lead us there, anything the navigation cannot lead us there, filter those out. I'm gonna go here and say, I'm gonna filter only to filter those out. Cool. All right, so now I have a better query EQS query to constantly tell me a better place to go check, tell the AI. So I'm going to save this EQS, all right? So how do we use this EQS? Well, what we can do is uh, we can go to our behavior tray and we can look for that uh, checking around one now. And the first thing is find a place that right? that's where I will run my EQS. Just type in run EQS query and here just just uh, go, let me make it bigger. Go to the EQS quest request and choose that EQS query we just created. And it's gonna ask, what do I update? It's now updating the focus actor. Those are not even compatible data. Right? This one will give me a location. So I need a location to hold that. That means I need a blackboard key here. I'm gonna call this new one, check location. Okay. 
uh, let's call this local run location. That makes more sense because the 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 variable run uh, above is last check location, right? So I would say local run location. That would be better or checking local run location, whatever. <laughs> so that's gonna be a vector here. <coughs> right, and that's where I'm gonna update using the EQS query. So this guy will then update that. Okay. Right. So what this means is basically every time when we ask we ask the UI to do the AI to do this is it's gonna run the EQS and then find. Oh, actually, here I'm also gonna say I will get the the best twenty five. So random atom from the best twenty five. Right. The the ones that has the uh, higher scores, right? Those twenty-five higher score ones. Pick, pick a random one there, right? That will be ma that, that that make it more interesting. And then it's gonna go there. Uh, it's gonna actually find that points location and the and uh, give uh, the set that value to the local around location or set the local around location to that value here to that best location this one gives us. And then we can simply do a move to to. Move there, right? I'm gonna say I'm gonna to move to the look around location, right? And do maybe a, a wait, oh, a wait here for uh, maybe two seconds. Right, so this behavior tray will do all these run EQS, move there and wait. So how can we use it? Well, first of all, before we use it, let's actually test it and see if, if it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my AI controller, and I'm gonna say let's let's go run the new behavior that I created just to check if the checking around works. That means the AI no longer will approach us or, or do anything. It's just gonna be randomly finding location and check. So let's take a look at what the AI is doing. Okay, you can see the AI is looking there. Wait, and go another place. Wait, and pick another place. Wait and fit another place, right? And wait. And you can also see the AI behavior here on the uh, checking around behavior tray and see what the AI is thinking over here, right? That would be a better way of debugging. So the AI is moving to that local run location. Mm -hmm. Wait. Find another local run location. Wait. We can also actually, if we can, we can show the EQS. Can see that's the EQS of the AI. You can see it's trying to pick. That's the winner. It's going towards the winner. Wait for two seconds. Go to another winner. Wait for two seconds and go to yet another winner. Right. So that's what the AI is doing now. Okay. Cool. So just to make things a little bit more interesting, uh, when the AI reaches there and instead of waiting, let's make the AI rotate the head, you know, left and right, and see, trying to basically you know, play a animation to rotate the head around. And uh, one of the things we have implemented pretty nicely here is that we actually have the AS head controlling the site. No, it's actually not there. It's actually on the ground for some reason. I'm not sure why. So I may need to check what's going on over there. Let's take a look at that. So we're casting two character. We're doing that. Ah, it's okay. Let's see if that's on the skeletal mesh. Should be there, or maybe I forget to save it. Maybe. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at the the mannequin uh, character mesh. Okay, skeletal mesh, and look for that. Maybe I forget to save this asset. Sometimes I forget to do that. So let's go to the skeleton. And look for the head. You can see it's not even there. So I'm gonna add that socket and put it in. And again, just need to rotate it forward and go up. Right. Save this. Now when I play, I should be able to see the AI showing me. Yeah, it's on the head. Cool. So then in the next video, we're gonna try to actually create. A animation, right? Because we don't really even have an animation to look around yet. So we need to create that animation first, and then I can show you how to use that animation. Okay, so see you next time.